Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Evelyn. So for today's video, I wanted to give some tips and ideas on how to curate a beautiful and unique home. I have done these how-to videos on my channel before. I actually have a playlist. I believe I have done a how to style artwork in your home, how to make your space feel designer, and how to make your space feel cozy and inviting. So if you do want to check those out, I will have them linked down below for you. But in today's video, I wanted to talk about how you can curate a unique home. I know we all strive for that curated look that doesn't look like everyone else's home. So hopefully I can give you guys some advice on how you can achieve that. But first off, I wanna talk about what I mean by a curated home. So the way I see it is a curated home is intentionally decorated. So you go out and source home decor items, furniture pieces that you carefully choose and you know that you're going to have a place for, that you love, that are timeless and that they all work together to create a cohesive and unique home. I know I'm definitely guilty in buying items because they were trendy, they were inexpensive or I just thought they were pretty but I didn't really have a place for them so I wasn't intentionally buying my items. I was just collecting items and storing them away. So hopefully after today's video you go from a collector to a curator. All right so the very first tip that I have is getting rid of excess items that you have. I have a little linen closet where I store all my excess home decor items that I'm not using in the moment and currently I started selling it a lot on Facebook marketplace. I started giving them away because I found myself not using these items and although it was really hard for me to get rid of the items because I feel like like one day I'm going to be like if only I had that one tray that I gave away or that I sold and I'm sure many of you have that same problem of getting rid of items because you think you're going to use them one day but if you haven't used them in a while I highly suggest just getting rid of them selling them and using that money to then buy items that you have been eyeing for a while that are going to be timeless in your home and you won't regret after a while the second tip that I have for you guys is doing DIYs DIYs is such a great way in bringing unique pieces into your home they are something that you created that no one else is going to create the exact same one sure you can recreate them but i feel like no two are going to be the exact same way so it's nice to know that you are the only one that owns that piece and if someone walks into your home and asks oh where did you get that you can proudly say that you made it and it's going to help you create that curated look that we are going for another way to achieve that look is buying items on facebook marketplace i cannot emphasize enough what amazing pieces you can find on there and for such a great price i have found my console table on there, a little stool, my lamp, a side table. It also is going to give your home some character because these are pieces that are old and have a story and a lot of the items that are sold on there are rare so they are no longer being sold or they are one-of-a-kind items that are very very hard to find. So sourcing these unique and antique items on there is going to make your home look intentional and built up over time so it's going to help you achieve that curated look. The next tip is shopping at home goods. I feel like home goods is like the newer version of Facebook Marketplace so you can find new items but that are also unique and rare. It's honestly really really hard to find two of the same item at that store or finding items that other creators have shared and I know it can be frustrating when you see a creator share a vase that you like or some home decor item and they tell you that it was from home goods. I know I have been bummed out when I hear that it's from home goods because I know it's going to be really really hard for me to find that exact same item which helps you create that unique look in your home that sets apart from all the other home and they also have a lot of inexpensive items that have that antique look but without the price tag these are also pieces that are not sold online or you can purchase at another store which is why it's such a great store to shop at because you can find those rare and unique pieces now this next tip is key in creating that curated look and it's not always shopping at the big box stores and purchasing everything i have been guilty of this i used to shop a lot at target at walmart at michael's and it made my home lack care character because everything looked new and it just looked like you were kind of walking into a target. You want to mix old with new to add that character into your home, make it look like it's been built up over time, it's been curated, it's been collected. I know it can be tempting to shop the whole collection but be very intentional with the pieces that you get. Make sure that what you get is going to go with the rest of your decor. A great example is my bedroom makeover. I did purchase a lot of target items like the pendant, the quilt, some pillows, I think the lamps and the nightstands are also from there but personally it doesn't give me a target catalog look. I feel like it looks very curated because I did include some DIYs like my tree, the planter that I painted, the bench that I made. I also got a frame from Facebook Marketplace and a frame from Home Goods. So I mix and match the pieces so that it gives it a unique look that sets apart from all the other bedrooms that we see. Usually items from those stores are things that everyone tends to have and purchase so it can get a little repetitive. So 
be very intentional with your purchases at those stores. Next tip that I have for you guys in achieving that curated look is using sentimental pieces. And what I mean by that is using family heirlooms that have been passed down to you. These pieces have a story behind them. They have so much meaning and they are items that only you will have that you can use with the rest of your decor. Other sentimental pieces that you can also include in your home are pieces that come from your culture or from where you're from or even handmade items or customized items that were made for you. These are items that you can't just go out and purchase at a store. They are rare and one-of-a-kind items that are just for you. The next tip that I have for you guys is using real stems and greenery. We have seen so many designers use real stems, real florals, and I always see so many people asking where those stems are from, where the florals are from, and they always say that they are real and maybe they do this in a way so that their designs stand out and don't look like the other designers home. So maybe they do it on purpose so that their home looks very unique and curated, which is also the look we are trying to go for. So go out and cut down some real stems, florals, tree branches, add them into your vase and it's going to give you not only an organic look but also a unique piece in your home. What's also nice is that it's going to set your home apart from everyone else's since it's going to be really really hard to find the exact same stem that someone else is using or creating the exact same arrangement that someone else created. You're going to add your own unique touch to it and what's nice is that it's also free. My next tip is sourcing home decor items and what I mean by that is taking the time to look at different shops either the thrift store an antique store small business shops on instagram on etsy i feel like etsy is such a great example of this there are so many small shops on there that not only you can support but can find very rare items a lot of the items on there are one of a kind so once someone buys it it is sold out there's no other item that looks just like it these are also pieces that those owners went out and sourced on their own they took their time to find unique pieces to sell on their shop so it's a great spot if you want to find those rare one-of-a-kind items. Instagram also has so many small businesses and every time that I find one I take the time to look through their website and see what they have to offer and I keep in mind and remind myself to not purchase items because I think they're pretty or because I think they're a good deal. I remember to be intentional with what I'm going to be purchasing and make sure that what I'm going to be purchasing is going to be working in multiple spaces in my home. Those are the items you want to buy because you know that you're going to be using them for a very long time. The thrift store and antique stores are also great places to find unique rare and antique items they are also really affordable which is nice and don't always look at the color of an item look at the overall shape and see if you can create something different with it you can maybe purchase a lamp or a vase that you can diy and paint into something that can match your home this is something i always keep in mind when i'm shopping i look at the overall shape to see if it reminds me of something else that i've seen that i like because who knows you might be overlooking an item just because of its color so my last and final tip that i have for you guys in creating that curated look is to not rush. Home takes a lot of time. Trust me, if you move into a space and try to rush and find a dining table, dining chairs, a sectional, coffee table, rug, home decor items, you are going to regret it down the line. I have been guilty of this. I have rushed and purchased items because I need them and not because I love them. And then later on, I find the piece that I actually like, which sucks because I had already purchased something else for this space. So make sure to not rush your purchases. Don't worry if your home looks unfinished. I'm sure many of our homes look that way. Also keep in mind that your style is going to keep changing. It's going to be evolving. So give yourself that time to see what you like, to see what your style is and finding those pieces that you 100% love and you know that are going to be timeless. So if you are moving into a new space, don't rush. Don't go out and just purchase items because you need it. Take your time or if you know ahead of time that you're going to be moving, start looking at items, seeing what you love so that you give yourself that time before you buy it. All right, you guys, that concludes today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed these tips and ideas on how to achieve a curated home remember that we want to be curators and not collectors so don't just collect items that you are eventually going to store away in a closet let me know down below in the comments if you like these how-to videos i have another one in mind that i want to film so let me know if you like them so that i can keep creating more i also want to emphasize that i am not an interior designer by any means these are just tips and ideas that i have learned along the way and that i wanted to share with you guys anyways i appreciate all of you so much for being here thank you so much for watching and until next time bye